this is the second part of our presentation that is homeostasis control systems there are basically three control systems genetic control system extrinsic control system and intrinsic control systems now when we see one by one that genetic control system the most physiological systems in our body use feedback to maintain the body's internal environment the human body has thousands of control system the most intricate of these are genetic control system the genes are located in cells control day to day functions of all the body's cell this is a simple genetic schematic diagram that represents how genetic control seen in our body the genes that concerned with rna formation rna is concerned with protein formation and protein formation that concerned with cell structure and cell enzymes and cell structure and cell enzymes decides cell's basic function there are three types of rna each of which plays an independent and entirely different role in protein formation these are respectively the messenger rna transfer rna and ribosomal rna the messenger rna which carries the genetic code to the cytoplasm for controlling the types of protein form while the transfer rna which transports activated amino acid to the ribosomes to be used in assembling the protein molecule while ribosomal rna which along with 75 different forms help in assembling actual cell structure when we see the another system that is extrinsic control system the most of homeostatic systems are extrinsic control system they control or they are controlled from outside the body the endocrine and nervous systems are the major control systems in higher animals while we see the third part that is intrinsic control system these are local systems this control usually involves only one organ or tissue when muscles use more oxygen and also produces more carbon dioxide intrinsic controls causes dilatation of blood vessels allowing more blood into those active areas of the muscle eventually the vessels will return to normal human body maintains glucose level is another example of this control system the human body maintains glucose levels constant most of the day even after 24 hours fast even during a long periods of fasting the glucose levels are reduced only to a very slightly third example sleep the sleep timing depends upon a balance between homeostatic sleep propensity the need for sleep as a function of the amount of time elapsed since the last adequate sleep episode and circadian rhythms that determine the ideal timings of a correctly structured and restorative sleep episode now in third part we will discuss further how this control mechanisms occurs simply this control mechanisms occur by these three parts respectively the receptor control center and stimulus we will discuss this part in later on